Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Magic Mile. Are you guys ready for some Grand National Flat Track Racing? Let me hear ya! Oh yeah, I love it. I'm down here on the victory podium. It's actually where the horses come after they win here at the Magic Mile. I am Scotty Dubler. I'll be doing the play-by-play -play all year long. It's my seventh season. I've got a new co-host this year. Before I bring him out, I'd like to bring up our beautiful trophy girls. Please help me in welcoming Amanda, Cassie, and Emily. Harley Davidson and Vance and Hines girls. They'll be up here making me look good and they'll be up here during every victory celebration. Welcome, ladies. Have fun at the Magic Mile. Like I said, I'm Scotty Dubler. I am joined this year. It's my honor to be joined by a seven-time Grand National Champion, and the last time we ran the Magic Mile, this was the man on top of the box. Make some noise for the seven-time champ, Chris Carr. Chris? There's a lot of people over there that have seen you race a lot of times and put a lot of miles on. You were the rider that won the last time we were here. How does it feel to come back to Ducoin? Well, it feels good to be here. Uh, I know we raced a short track indoors about four years ago, but uh, the only mile race I won was uh, here in 2005, and it was the last running. So I'm, I'm proud of that, but I'm looking forward to calling the action, see who the, uh, the new Ducoin mile winner is. Nobody in the, in the field today has ever won a race here on this track at the Grand National level. So it, um, I'm as excited as anybody to watch, watch the action and, and call it along the way. We've been talking all afternoon how, how much our tracks are different, every track we go to. Last week we were on the only pea gravel track, and it was a, a different, you know, different track, and it took a man to win that race. Brad Baker dominated all day long. What is it going to take to win the Ducoin Mile? Well, I think it's going to take a little bit of that. It's going to take a little bit of bravery, but it's also going to take some calculated uh, decisions along the way. We have a distinct racetrack here. It's a true four uh, four turn, four apex racetrack, unlike any oval that we go to. So uh, we're going to see uh, the strength strengths out of a lot of bikes, and if they happen to have any weaknesses, they'll be exposed as well. So it's a great test, not only for the riders, but for the teams as well. We actually have four different corners. We talked earlier, and I kind of described it as like an Indianapolis Motor Speedway, but on dirt. We actually go in there, turn left, there's a turn one, a short shoot, and then there's turn two, a long back straightaway, the same thing at the other end, a Specific turn three, another short shoot, and then a turn four. How different is it? How hard is it to get your mind and wrap your 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 bike around it and, and tune yourself in for this track? Well, every rider and every team is different. I think these guys will be looking to uh, find a comfort level. One of the things that they'll have to get used to doing here that they won't at some of the other riders uh, or the other racetracks is to get used to you know increasing their comfort level of being close to the hay bales and the and the air fence. Uh, the, the line through the middle of the corner when this track is at its absolute best and fastest is pretty far up through the middle of the turns. So these guys are going to have to work hard at cheating their way up to the outside of the racetrack and use everything, everything this track has to offer. Well, you've got a long ways back to where we're going to be announcing from. I'm going to let you go. Have fun calling the race. And, and are you going to stick around after the race and maybe sign some autographs? I know you're here all week long. The Amateur Dirt Track Grand Championships start here on Monday. You're sticking around to help out our amateurs up and coming. Are you going to stick around for these fans later tonight? I certainly will. I'll, I'll be around. Uh, I have nowhere to go. So I'm, I'm here in DuCoin for the duration. Well, have fun and, and good luck covering this, uh, the, this unique Magic Mile. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for coming out. Special thanks to everybody at Family Events for uh, bringing us back to the Magic Mile. It's a great facility. Thanks for being here to support it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the words of the man himself, a seven-time champion. That's Chris Carr, who will be doing our color analyst role all year long and right here tonight at the Magic Mile. Now, at this time, I'd like to introduce some of our riders. The first rider I'd like to bring up is our Motobat hard charger from last week at Lima. He started deep in the field, worked his way all the way up to fifth place. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for national number 23, Jeffrey Carver, Jr. Jeffrey, welcome up here to our podium. You picked up the Motobat Hard Charger last week. I know that's not the check you wanted to take home, but every little bit helps. Congratulations on being the Hard Charger last weekend at Lima. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was a fun race. Uh, you know, it's all about just moving forward, especially in the expert ranks. You know, it's hard to uh, stay on top, and uh, so it's all about just going forward. And this is my first time winning this year, so it uh, feels really good. And every week, and we keep moving up, so we try to keep going. 
Well, you don't want to win that trophy because that means you started way at the back, but that means you passed the most people and finished up there. You actually finished fifth place, so congratulations on that finish. Let's shift our attention to what's happening today. What's going on on the Magic Mile? How are you getting around it? Uh, I was getting around it as high as I could possibly go. I, I was up next to the air fence a couple times there and uh, just trying to go the biggest way around, try to pull that tall gear and, you know, just uh, keep up the speed. Um, but with the racetrack, we got a lot of different lines out there today. And, uh, man, it's going to be some really good race, and there's going to be people all over the racetrack. So uh, we're going to put on a good show for you fans. Typically on the mile, there's a lot of draft passing. Today in practice, we saw a lot more passing in the corners than ever before. What are we going to see in the racing action? You guys are going to be all grouped up. I think the track is packing in. It's going to be super fast. We're going to have passes on the straightaway and the corners. Yeah, we're going to have it everywhere. I mean, it's going to be a dogfight out there. You know, it's going to be short track racing, but we're going to have the miles down the straightaway. So, uh, you know, it's going to be all over the place. Well, before we let you go, you want to say thanks to anybody for helping you be in the Moto Bat Hard Charger from last week? Yeah, um, you know, first of all, I want to thank all the fans that came down, shook my hand, and, uh, you know, bought some stuff. It always helps out. And uh, I got to thank the Don's Kawasaki DPC team uh, with Eddie Atkins and Woody Kyle uh, helping out building the motors. Uh, you know, it's a great team. Uh, these guys are top notch, and uh, they're giving me everything that I need to move forward. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, the words of National Number 23, our Motobat Hard Charger from last week. Make some noise one more time for Jeffrey Carver from Alton, Illinois. <clears throat> Up next, unfortunately, our Saddleman Rookie of the Year leader, our points leader, took a tumble off of turn number four in practice, so he is getting checked out right now in the local hospital. Word is he's doing okay. They just want to do some safety precautions and check him out. I'm talking about the 77 of Kyle Johnson. So that means our second place rider in the Saddleman Rookie of the Year leader is here to be represented. Make some noise for number 17F, Jared Vanderkoy. Jared, welcome up here to the podium. I also brought you up here because I want you to know how to get here for when you win a little bit later on. How are you feeling today? Uh, we're feeling really good. Uh, we struggled the first time out, but uh, we're coming around, you know, uh, first time here. So we're feeling off the track, getting our bike set up, and uh, really looking to put on a good show for you guys. Uh, it's going to be a fun track later on tonight when the sun goes down. It was pretty cool. Your teammate was just up here. You got those cool Don's Kawasaki shirts on. You're second in the Rookie of the Year standings. You went out there Daytona, won your heat race, already made a Grand National main event, so next year you'll have a national number. Tell us what's been the key to your success so far in 2015. Uh, good people behind me. You know, I have the Don's Kawasaki team and uh, Woody Kyle Race and Ben Evans. Uh, they gave me a good bike and Floyd Tap also. Uh, there's just uh, good people behind me and uh, just been working real hard to get to this point, you know, and uh, it's all paying off. Have you ever raced here at the DeCoin Magic Mile? Uh, this first time. What do you think so far? The track changes every lap, and it's different right now than it was earlier. Yeah, it was really loose and dry the first time we went out, and the uh, cushion started getting pushed up, and it started getting real dry and uh, hard on the bottom. So it's uh, changing every time we're out there. We just have to adjust to it as a rider because once you're out there, you can't change your bike. So uh, um, you're just changing as a rider out there and uh, see how the 25 lap goes. I asked Jeffrey if we're going to have passing on the straightaways or passing in the corners or both. What's your opinion? There's definitely going to be both. There's multi-lines out there. You know, uh, at the end of that third practice session, I seen a little groove starting to form on the bottom getting into the corners, and people were entering in the cushion. So there's definitely going to be swapping back and forth, and uh, there's definitely going to be a run to that start-finish line right there. What is your goal today coming into the races? Uh, we're definitely going to get in that dash for cash, you know, uh, get a top two in the heat race. That's going to be a big stepping stone for us, get a front row for the main, uh, get a good start. It's been a struggle for us this year, uh, getting a start on the twin and uh, just, uh, you know, just run consistent laps and learn as we go. You know, uh, being my first year with these guys, uh, like Kenny Coolbeth and them, they got a lot of knowledge. Sounds good. I know you thank Don's Kawasaki, DPC Racing. You want to say thanks to anybody else? Yeah, definitely uh, Don's, DPC, uh, Woody Kyle Racing, Ben Evans. Bell Helmets, Motorcycle Superstore, Spectra Oils, Vortex, Motion Pro, uh, everybody for coming out and the fans. You know, uh, without you guys here, we wouldn't be able to do this. So uh, thank you guys. Keep your eyes on this youngster, ladies and gentlemen. Number 17F, make some noise for Jared Vanderkoy. So the next rider I'd like to bring up is our GNC2 points leader. If he wins the championship, he will take home a one kind ring that has been made by Tommy Duma Fine Jewelers, TDFJ.com. If you want to check it out, we'll bring him up right now. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for number 67M, Dashin Davis Fisher.
Davis, welcome up here to the podium. That is a cool ring you just brought up here. What would it mean to if you won the championship at the end of the 2015 season? Man, it would mean a lot. It's uh, pretty cool to be back up here after the get off at Sacramento. And uh, it would be awesome to have this ring. Uh, it would be a great uh, decoration in the room or on my finger. Well, you never know what you're going mean, to That thing is beautiful. Tommy Duba did a wonderful job. It's a one-of-a-kind piece. You will actually take home the first one. Last year, the winner of GNC2 got a Rolex. This is the first time we've uh, recognized the GNC2 class with this ring. Yeah. Um, again, I just it would be awesome to get this championship and uh, move on up next year. How's your twin running here today? You're looking pretty good out there in qualifying practice. Yeah, thank you. Uh, in the first practice, uh, we had a male function, and uh, we got it fixed up and uh, qualified second at Tristan Avery. And then in the second qualify qualifying, uh, I got first, and uh, we're hoping to get on top of the box in the heat race and in the main. How important it will be to get a good start out there in the heat race? Uh, it will be a really important. I'm uh, hoping to come off turn two first and uh, just try and check out. Don't look back from there, right? Right. You want to thank your sponsor before we let you go to work? Yeah, I thank Parks and Brothers Racing, Bob Lanfears, Beaver and Honda, Dan Wall Racing, The Fox, Team 95, My Uncle Ryan, Allied Motors, Arai Helmet, Saddleman Seats, and uh, anyone else that I forgot. What about these fans? And in the fans. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your eyes on the 67M. It's our points leader in the GNC2 class, Dashin Davis Fisher. Up next, we'll switch our attention back to the GNC1 class. Our Grand National points leader is our defending champion. He just moved into the points lead, and he'll be racing. If he wins again, he'll take home another Rolex from TDFJ. Tommy Duma Fine Jewelers makes some noise for our defending Grand National champion, rider number one, the jammer, Jared Meese. Well, jammer... You've got a, a nice Rolex in your hand. You've got one already that I see you wearing around. If you win another one, what are you going to do with it? Put one on the other wrist. You're going to be bling blinging one on each wrist? Yeah, exactly. You know, if uh, you want to have a good time, you got to have a good watch. Well, we that'd be awesome. I mean, you, so far you're now in the points lead for the first time this season. Uh, cool bet struggle last weekend at Lima. You've been Mr. Consistency. You're still looking for your first win of 2015. Can you do it here tonight? Yeah, I feel really good. Uh, the motorcycle feels really strong. Uh, Kenny Tolbert, Sammy Sweet, they got the thing running really well. But you're, you're right, you know, we want to get that uh, first win and multiple wins, really. You know, that's what it takes to win these championships. But uh, so far, consistency shown, and we're sitting here uh, in the points lead. This track is very unique. It's got four separate corners. We were talking about it a lot during qualifying. We talked to your mechanic earlier in the pre-show. He said it's pretty much going to be up to the rider. He can only do so much with the bike, so he's putting it all in your hands. Yeah, that's, uh, that's all good. You know, I, like I said, I felt good. Um, depending on what's going to happen when the sun goes down here, I hope the track's as racy as what I've always seen and grew up watching my heroes race here. So uh, this track's always looked to me like to be like a get-it-on race track, and I'm really looking forward to that. Is today your first time to ride a, a twin? I know you raced a Sportster here before a long time ago. Is this the first time to race a twin? No, I raced here in 2004 and 2005 uh, riding uh, Johnny Goad's XR 750 Harley. Um, I think I uh, won Rookie of the Year here in 04. I think it was the last race here then. But uh, I don't really remember it a whole lot. You know, you go out there and you race certain racetracks and it comes right to you. This one really didn't, so I, I don't really remember it that well. What's it going to take to beat that Kawasaki number 42? He's fast qualifier today. I think he got something for him. You and Brad Baker are messing around with each other in your practice session. Do you guys have anything in store for 42? You know, I think we just need to run consistent laps. Brian's for sure going to be there, and, uh, you know, Brad showed some strength out there. But, you know, this track, you can handle a lot of corner speed, and uh, hopefully we can just build up some corner speed and break the draft. Sounds good. You want to thank anybody else before we let you go? No doubt. I can't say enough for Rogers Racing, SDI Insulation, Las Vegas, Harley Davidson, Harley Davidson Motor Company, uh, Bell Ray Oil, and Millennium Technologies, National Cycle, Bullet Jeans, uh, Monster Energy Drink. Uh, just all you fans are coming out. Family events are putting on such a, a, a bitch and mile track. My buddy Craig Pickett at home, just uh, Sammy Sweet, Kenny Tolbert, them guys work endless hours, and um, hopefully this is uh, the reason why it shows. Sounds good. Best of luck to you today. Thank you. That is our points leader, ladies and gentlemen, and our defending Grand National Champion, the number one, Jared Meese. Well, if you take a look over there, I can see that the beard has showed up, and I'm going to see if he's going to come up here. Uh, he, he's got me over there. Chris Schoonover, can you hear me down there? 
I, I can see the beard. Can, can Schoonover show? Ladies and gentlemen, from Harley Davidson Motor Company, a huge sponsor of AMA Pro Flat Track. You can see the beard got here about 10 minutes ago. Now, here comes Chris Schoonover. Ladies and gentlemen, from a Harley Davidson Motor Company, please welcome Chris Schoonover. Chris, I, I saw your beard got here, I mean, a little while ago, and then you showed up. So I'm glad you could join us in your beard as well. You know, I think last time we talked, you were going to grow one, and it really. I mean, the camera adds 15 pounds, but no hair. Can I borrow some Rogaine? <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, I did it. All kidding aside, Harley Davidson, a huge sponsor of AMA Pro Grand National Flat Track, and you're our title sponsor this year. We appreciate it. Vance and Hines is the presenting sponsor. Man, we appreciate it. How much fun are we going to have here tonight? You know, I'm, I'm really, as I was driving here, I was excited. I've never been to this track. I've never seen a race here. Just excited to see it uh, go down. Can't wait. I'm so excited too. What would it mean if a Harley Davidson won tonight? It'd mean a lot. It'd mean a lot for us. It'd mean a lot for the class. I mean, the, the top five or six riders are so tight in points, and there's a few Harleys in there that we like. Anything new and on the horizon we need to talk about? You're going to keep that all in your, in your back pocket until we see the new models coming out pretty soon. Yeah, you'll see them soon enough. Uh, about the end of August, you'll, you'll get to see the latest and greatest models, so you'll just have to wait a little while. Well, that's okay. We'll have you up at the next round at Indy, and then we'll see you again when we go on to Sturgis for the 75th Sturgis Rally. Man, what a great year we've had. We appreciate you stopping by opening ceremonies. Thank you, and if you're coming to Sturgis, make sure that you stop by our display. We've moved everything this year. We are all located downtown Sturgis, 5th and LaZelle. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Chris. Thank you. That is Chris Schoonover, ladies and gentlemen, from the Harley-Davidson Motor Corporation. We are actually celebrating the uh, birthday of the United States of America. We owe a lot to our veterans, ladies and gentlemen. So this team is actually reaching out above and beyond. They have a vet join them in the pit crew each and every round of the AMA Pro Grand National Flat Track Series. At this time, I'd like to bring up Bill Gately and Sergeant Edward Stowe, who has had two tours of duty in Iraq. He's the vet that's helping out. And the rider is Jake Shoemaker. I'd like to have those folks join me up here on the podium. Ladies and gentlemen, put our hands together for our vet and also Bill Gately with the Triumph team, our vet, Edward Stowe, and our rider, Jake Shoemaker. Come on up here, Bill. Tell us a little bit about the vetmotorsports.org uh, deal that you guys have going on. Vet Motorsports is the first uh, non-clinical support group for combat vetter veterans that are coming back from Afghanistan and Iraq post 9-11. Uh, we're the first team in AMA Pro Racing uh, in the flat track series to take on Vet Motorsports as a full-time team member. Ed Snowden has been with our team uh, six times, including today. He's a hard-working guy. He's a combat-injured veteran. And uh, you got to remember something about these guys, that they went from an environment which is the most extreme form of competition in the world, combat, coming back to a, a very civil society. And what they need is to come back to competition where they can feel the same stress and feel the competition within the teams and this environment here and this dirt track uh, now has the fiercest competition it's had in 30 years and it's all good for us and it's good for vet motorsports well we appreciate everything you guys do as the uh, bonneville performance triumph team helping our vets out that is so cool was it your idea to get involved with this awesome organization i i did hear about them through my uh publicist Christy Cottrell and I eagerly invited her to invite Vet Motorsports into the organization and be part of our team. Being a combat veteran myself and a wounded combat veteran I was eager to bring these guys on and they've been a great compliment to our team. Awesome Bill thank you very much I'm gonna move over here and talk to your riders the number 55 Jake Shoemaker how much does it mean to you to know that you got a combat vet back there helping you out in the pit area like this guy here standing beside us Edward's been here for six rounds. Yeah it's great to have Ed and everyone from Vet Better Sports, Pete Klein, all them guys here helping our program um, just giving these guys this whole sense of, of team and having them part of our team and the help that they bring. I mean, they're, they're a tremendous help. You can never have too many hands in the pit. And just to have everyone supporting the team and, and vets from Vet Motorsports and everything they do for our vets, um, it's great having organizations out there. I mean, unfortunately, not enough organizations are out there for our veterans, but 
definitely having these guys here is huge. I think it'd be pretty cool if when you win your first Grand National that you give your vet a victory lap. I think that'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's that's I never really thought of it, but that's good that you brought that up. And that's a if I if when I win tonight, that's what we're going to do. So. All right. I love your confidence. I know you got a good thing going on. Keep an eye on the number 55. Best luck to you tonight. Thanks, Scotty. That is Jake Shoemaker, number 55. And I'd like to bring up, ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for Sergeant Edward Stowe, a combat vet from the United States Army. We appreciate you being part of it. How has this uh, working with the uh, Triumph team number 55 helped you out personally? Uh, it's just, uh, I mean, it's a fun time to come here, and uh, you're, you're part of a team again. And uh, that's, that's really what we look for is just to feel part of something bigger than just ourselves. Well, your hands are dirty. looks like you've been doing a lot of work down there. What's your favorite part of working on these bikes, and, and uh, what's happening in the pit area? Um... I don't know. It's all pretty fun. So. All, all, you love all of it. That's really cool. Yeah. We're just having fun. Hopefully we win. He should win. He better. He should win. He, he should win. He better. Ed, uh, Edward, thank you very much for stopping up here, and best luck to you. Thanks for being a veteran and providing the freedom here in the United States of America. That oh, was my honor. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is Sergeant Edward Stowe, Bill Gately, and Jake Shoemaker, vetmotorsports.org for more information. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring up our third member of our broadcast team. She's going to be up on the podium all night long. She comes to us from Minnesota. You can hear the Minnesota accent. Please welcome Danny Medin as I head off. Danny, this is your first trip to the Magic Mile. Have fun, and we'll see you at the end of the night. I have the best seat in the house. You do. I'm going to let you have the microphone. I'll see you later. All right. Thank you. And I want to say a special thank you to all of you for joining us here today and spending your 4th of July with us. Will you please rise and remove your hat? And let's make some noise for our current vets and our past and present servicemen and women who are currently protecting our freedom. God bless America. And now Raymond Rizzo from Motor Racing Outreach, you're gonna lead us in our invocation. Thank you, Danny. Pray with me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and this opportunity to do what we love. I thank you for America. I pray that you keep, continue to keep your hand upon her. I pray that you bless the leadership, all those that are serving in this land. Thank you again for the men and women that serve here and abroad. Keep everyone safe, I pray. Tonight as we race, I ask that you bless each rider with safety. Help them to do their best. Bless their, their families, their friends, their crews, and each one that helps them to do what they love. I also ask that you bless this beautiful facility, those working so hard to put this event on. Thank you for each and every one, and we ask everything in Christ's name, amen. Please remain standing. Let's welcome Bo Braswell, Nashville, Tennessee, Twist Grip EMI recording artist. You're going to sing our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave 
for the land of the free and the home of the brave. <laughs> oh boy. to go racing. Make some noise. That is it for opening ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the DeCoin Magic Mile. Coming up first will be the GNC2 heat race number one. That's coming up first. We have two GNC2 heat races. We'll take the top seven finishers directly to the GNC2 main event. That's how we'll start the program. After that, we'll have three GNC1 heat races. They're going to give these guys one lap to check out the racetrack. And when they come back, or when they get further down into turn number one, I will give you the starting lineup for tonight's first heat race. They give them one lap because it's been a little while since they've been on the racetrack and they are getting the track checked out one more time they call it a siding lap and it's an awesome thing that they do i'm the i'm scotty dubler alongside me is the seven time champ chris carr chris are you ready for the magic mile uh yes i am very ready i think a lot of us uh who are our fans of the sport have been looking forward to the return of the dude coin mile and hope this is the first of many more years to come Absolutely. So here is the starting lineup, ladies and gentlemen. Heat race number one. Again, the top seven finishers go directly to the main event. On the pole from Chesterfield, Virginia, the 16S fast qualifier Tristan Avery. From Albion, New York is the 94B Ryan Wells, 24F J.R. Addison, 50, as last week's winner, 54A Dan Bromley, 11Z Andrew Luker, the 44E. He was the points leader last week. Now he's sitting a little further back. That's the 44E Nick Armstrong. Row number two, 30Z Bronson Bauman, 14A Dalton Gautier. 23Z, James Monaco, 57A, Brian Connolly, 32C, Brian McRoberts, 10L, Mac McGrew. Row number three, the 55L, uh, that's Cole King, 17A, Jordan Harris, 35, or, I'm sorry, 33P is Levi Mayer, and rounding out your fields, the 11F, Curtis Vandekoy, and I heard on the radio that the Vandekoy machine is a scratch. So we have 15 riders in heat race number one, top seven finishers going directly to the main event. Everybody else comes back in a semifinal. Ladies and gentlemen, are you guys ready for the Magic Mile? So they're staged up and ready to go. The clutches will go in. There's a Christmas tree down there with Chris with a red, two yellows, and a green. And it is race time here in DuCoin. Riders have the bikes in gear, eagerly waiting the flash of the green light. Heat race number one, 2015 AMA Pro Grand National Flat Track Series. And they are off into turn number one they go. It'll be the 24F, I believe, J.R. Addison grabbing the whole shot from the middle of the front row. On the inside, be one of the green bikes. That is going to be... The uh, 54A of Dan Bromley, they're side by side in turns one and two. Down the back straight with the very first time, Chris Carr, here they come. As Addison holds on to the lead, coming off at of turn two and leads him down the back straightaway. Uh, it's be interesting to watch the racetrack and how it develops. The track looks to be the tightest that it's been all day long, but we have some sections that are a little drier than others. We have other parts as we see the 11F up in the morning where it's packed down pretty tight, getting a really good run up around the outside. That's the 11Z of Andrew Luker coming around the outside. Now he's in second. He's right there behind our early leaders, the 24F. That's J.R. Addison, our fast qualifier, sitting back there in the third spot. That is Tristan Avery. Here comes another rider up there into the middle of the pack. That's Bauman, I believe, on the 30Z. He started on row number two. He's already up to the third spot. Now he's in fourth. He's looking for some more off of turn number two. Down the back straight away they go here in the coin. Outstanding run through turns one and two by the 11Z. Andrew Luker is the 24F drafts up the inside. It looks like the high line is wanting to develop pretty quickly through turns one and two. We'll see if it stretches uh, around to turns three and four as well as Luker still getting a good drive up the front stretch. This is Andrew Luker's second time out on an XR750 Harley, second time on a twin. The first time ended on the ground in, in Springfield, Illinois. Now he's on the Jerry Kennedy XR750. He's up there by the air fence as all the riders look like they drifted in a little bit deeper in turn number one. Well, the racetrack is a little bit more moisture uh, up on the high side. 
Uh, as we saw Luker and a couple of the riders uh, get kind of sucked into the outside wall coming off of turn two. But J.R. Addison now starting to establish a little bit of gap here as Luker tries to come to turns with the high line. GNC2, heat races, they go six laps out front. Still a 24F, J.R. Addison second, Andrew Luker third, Tristan Avery. Avery's been overtaken now. Bauman's in the third spot. Avery's right there. And here comes the big, tall rider, the 54A of Bromley up to fifth as we are halfway through heat race number one. Yeah, Bromley on the Bill Werner Kawasaki uh, running a campaign in the GNC2 class this year with a young upstart, uh, Dan Bromley. Uh, he's got a good motorcycle underneath him uh, with a tuner that no knows how to win races as a tuner, that's for sure. Absolutely. Former factory Harley-Davidson tuner is Bill Warner. He's put this Kawasaki together. He's got Dan Bromley riding it. Out front is still J.R. Addison, the 24F. Luker searching for a smooth way around the track. He's up above the groove and uh, in some looser stuff right now, so he's still in second. So it's Addison, Luker. Now uh, looks like Tristan Avery's back up there into the third spot. I didn't even know if he was going to come here this weekend. Yeah, a kid riding with a couple of broken toes in his right foot after making contact with the outside uh, fence in Lima doing a good job here in the heat race as he battles for the third place position Bromley squares up coming off a of turn two kind of cuts across in front of the the 16 of Avery as uh, we got a got the battle for third heating up Bromley takes over the third spot. That slides Bronson Bauman. Brombo back to fourth. Here comes a, a Bromley on the 54, and he's got his hands full. Here comes the 44. You have Nick Armstrong. So remember at Springfield, Armstrong had terrible time getting off the line. If he gets his Suzuki going, it starts catching up. White flag is out. Top seven finishers, ladies and gentlemen, go directly to the GNC2 main event. It's still Addison, Luker, Bromley, one, two, and three. Chris? Yeah, the track is uh, not really faster than what they win early on in practice, but they are cutting more consistent laps. The leader out front, J.R. Addison, last three laps, all within one-tenth of a second of each other at the high 37 nines, low 38. So uh, these guys are, are coming to grips with a racetrack that's going to continue to change as the evening goes on. The leader said he doesn't have a lot of a win experience, but doesn't seem to show because he is pulling away. Here comes your heat race winner, 24F, Jer Addison, taking over where he left off last week. Addison takes the win. Luker second. Tristan Avery, a solid performance up there and comes up there into the third spot. More riders crossing the finish line right now. Some of these riders first time out on the twin. Again, your recap looks like this and your transfers are 24F, J.R. Addison, your winner. 11C, Andrew Luker comes home second. Tristan Avery, the 16S will be third. 54A of Dan Bromley will be fourth. 30Z, Bronson Bauman, fifth. Another California rider back in sixth is Nick Armstrong and Flying Ryan Wells will take the seventh and final transfer spot. I'm surprised to see Dalton Gauthier, James Monaco, a couple of the standouts that are going to the last Last chance qualifier. The winner is going down there to the victory podium. Hopefully he can find it. It's on the inside of the track. you got to go up where the uh, horse racing finishers go. Yeah, it's a little bit different trip for, for these guys uh, coming off the racetrack to find their way to uh, to our victory podium. But it's it's a pretty cool little set up there. I know that's how they kind of trot the horses up there. And uh, these guys are going to trot their horsepower up there today. Absolutely. So good run right there. That's the Kawasaki. And he was in the pre-show earlier. And he actually said that uh, Brian Smith's dad actually has helped him out and helped build that motorcycle. That's pretty cool. Uh, Brian Smith, who's the GNC2 rider with the 42. And this is the 24th. So the numbers are just backwards. And uh, we'll put him up there on the victory podium. And we'll give him just a second to take off his skid lid. And then Danny Medine will catch up too. Our heat race winner, as he unplugs the battery, that's pretty smart on that young rider's uh, behalf. So got to save the juice on these babies, yeah. All right, the helmet's off. Let's go down trackside with Danny Medine. All right, thanks, you guys. Give, your, hey, give a round of applause to J.R. Addison, our first GNC2 heat winner. Do you go in mile? It's a first for you. Let's talk about this. How was your experience so far? Uh, my experience so far was pretty good. Uh, I qualified pretty good in the... The track's definitely shaping up. It's uh, It's got a lot more moisture in it now. It's kind of smoothing out a little bit and uh, should definitely make for some good racing in the main. Now, this is your guys' second time on the Twins this season, and I heard in the pre-race show that Brian Smith was giving you a little advice. Do you want to share some of that with us? Yeah, you know, he's uh, just trying to be, uh, okay, I was uh, you know, coaching me around a little bit, just showing me a few pointers here and there, and, you know, it's definitely helping. He's obviously definitely one of the best miles around, milers around, and, um, <clears throat> You know, it's great to have right. him giving me some advice. All right, well, you're doing something right. You're going on to the main. Back to you, Scotty and Chris. Thanks a lot, Danny. Congratulations to J.R. Addison. Heat race number two is coming onto the track right now, just like the last one. Top seven finishers go directly to 
go directly to the main event on the pole. We met this rider earlier in opening ceremony, 67M Davis Fisher, 23F Jeffrey Lowry, 68A third generation racer, that's Ryan Barnes, 47F Austin Conant, 27U Jameson Minor, and the 72F Tyler Butts, that's your front row. Row number two, 16M Austin Helmholtz, 24J Brandon Wilhelm, 56A Roy Miller, 89C Chris Boone, 17C Sean McNary, and the 22G, that's Dalton Bell. Row number three, 35L Charlotte Keynes, 74F Barry Binkert Jr., 11G Gary Ketchum, and the 36B, that's the Flying Tomatoes, struggling a little bit today. Colby Carlisle starting 16th in heat race number two. What do you think, Chris? It's heat race number two. Track looked pretty good. Heat race number one looks fast. It does look fast. The lap time's uh, pretty good, but uh, I'll be interested to see uh, how Davis Fisher uh, does here. He's been going out first in practice. Now the track's been, he's been kind of having to define the racetrack. Track is different, still a little inconsistent, but there's some moisture up there on the high side. Let's see if he goes to it. All right, so the trophy girl walks off, and the wet means we're five seconds away from the light going from red. It's on the first yellow is on. We're walking, there's a second yellow, and then there's a green. Uh-oh, somebody's creeping across the line. The red light comes back on. There are laser beams, Chris, across every one of those rows. Yeah, I never like those those laser beams. You can't see them or what? No, well, that's that's for one. But, you know, it's like it kind of kind of you want to kind of get going and it trips you, trips you up. Sometimes uh, you go to the back as uh, the red light came red light on once again. So it was I don't know if somebody somebody on line number two is what they're saying on the AMA Pro Radio. Usually, if they bring the red out, somebody has crossed the beam and that means somebody's going back. But they're making sure everybody is in line. Again, we have three rows of motorcycles. This is the GNC2 class for you new fans. It's the up-and-comer class. These are riders or some riders are with not as much experience, but it doesn't show because the times are very close to GNC1. No, not as much experience, but these guys are on GNC1 level equipment. They have, they're running basically the same equipment standards as the GNC1 class. Tyler Butts grabbed the whole shot, but he way overshot turn number one. That means Revan Ryan Barnes takes over the lead. Tyler Butts slides back to second. Fisher in the third spot. He'll take him down the back straight away here at the Magic Mile. New leader going into turn number three. 72F of Tyler Butts out front. Ryan Barnes currently in second. Davis Fisher, second generation racer, wanting to get a good run up around the outside off of turn four. They go three abreast, nearly coming off the turn. Barnes has to check up, coming off the corner. Fisher looking for a way around the outside. A lot of swerving back in the pack. Here comes Barnes. It's still Barnes and Butts. And in third spot is Fisher. Fisher looking for a way around the outside. He goes on by as something flew off one of the motorcycles in turn number one. No harm, no foul. They're going to keep on racing. It is Barnes out front. Now Fisher's in second. That slides. Tyler Butts back to the third spot. Down the back straightaway they go. Whoa! One rider touches the back straightaway wall, puts him into the middle of the straightaway. He keeps on going. Crazy competition so far in this heat race. Yeah, we just saw Davis Fisher uh, line up a good, perfect, picture-perfect draft down the back straightaway. Took him a, a little bit to get lined up. As soon as he got lined up behind Barnes, he was able to able to uh, utilize the draft slingshotting him into the, into the lead as he's trying to stretch out the lead here early in, on lap three. We'll see if this youngster, uh, Revan Ryan Barnes, can keep Davis Fisher in his sights. I know that's what he's, his plan is now as, as Fisher has gotten away. He last time across the line was .2 seconds. Barnes tucks in and gets as small as he can down the back straightaway. Tyler Butts in the third spot. Minor fourth. Austin Helm holds fifth. Sean McNary's in sixth. And Austin Conant is shown in the seventh and final transfer spot. The rider looking in is the 89C of Chris Boone, a rider that I grew up racing with a lot. Yeah, Chris Boone, a veteran, making a return to GNC2 competition. Have some fun close to home. But uh, it, here we are halfway. Fast lap so far. Quite a bit quicker than GNC2 uh, heat race one. 37-4-4-3 and a 37-4-1-7 for uh, the last two laps for our leader. Is that uh, it's a half a second quicker than the uh, first heat. Is that because of the riders? Because the track's a little bit faster than the last heat race. Well, I think the track uh, is is well defined. Uh, those these guys had the benefit of watching the the first heat and they know where they can go uh, right off the uh, right off the bat. As we have a couple riders get together uh, in turns Conan. three, Conan and uh, 27U of uh, Jamison Minor. Uh, looks like they made contact going into turn three. So we're past the halfway point, about two laps to go in the heat race and number two for the GNC2 riders. Up next will be the GNC1 competition. Good battle back here for fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. It's still Davis Fisher out front. Barnes is in second. Tyler Butts is in third. They've kind of separated themselves from everybody else. And here is the rest of the battles. Looks like we have Austin Connett shown in fourth, Jameson Minor, Austin Helmholtz, and Chris Boone now in the seventh and final transfer spot. Good to see Chris Boone uh, 
I'm, I'm sure being older, he doesn't want to have to ride a semi. If he doesn't have to, he's going to do everything he can to get as long a rest before the final. I've asked you before, different places, do you think Boone knows what position he's in right now? You can't see the leader quite where he's at. He just right now needs to pass as many people as he can. Yeah, I would. he, he may know. Uh, I mean, I always kind of counted if I could, if I was happy, if I was struggling. I, you know, that way I knew where I needed to be. But as we see Boone running up high, in the last transfer position, trying to move forward and try to line up on the 16 to get a good draft down the back straightaway. How would you count how many people are in front of you and count your tear-ups and count the laps? Well, that's just one of those things. You're, you're multi-talented. That's why you're seven-time champion. <laughs> Still Fisher out front, last corner, ladies and gentlemen. Heat race number two for the GNC2 class. Fisher's going to bring him to the line. Barnes is going to come home in second. Tyler Butts is third. Here comes your leader across the start finish line. Fisher taking the win. Barnes a pretty close second. He didn't pull away. Third spot would be Tyler Butts. Good solid run there. Minor and the rest of the riders coming across the start finish line. We'll give you a full field rundown just as soon as the rest of the bikes get across the track. No big surprises in that one to me. Fisher looks very strong all day. One one surprise, the 23F Jeffrey Lowry, who uh, lined up second uh, on the front row, uh, a disappointing eighth-place finish, finds himself having to transfer to the LCQ. I'm sure that team will go back and uh, do a little bit of work. He had a lot, had good speed earlier in qualifying, not quite able to follow up with, uh, with a good finish here in heat race number two. Once again, your transfers are Davis Fisher, your winner. Ryan Barnes will get second. Tyler Butts will get the third spot to a fourth of 27U Jamison Minor, 47F Austin Connett will be fifth, Austin Helmholtz will be sixth, and Chris Boone gets that seventh and final transfer. Jeffrey Lowry, Brandon Wilhelm, Dalton Bell round out your top ten. Roy Miller, Sean McNary was up there for a little while, faded. Charlotte Keynes in her first pro race with us. Comes home 13th, Barry Binkert, Gary Ketchum, and Colby Carlisle did not start. 36B did not make it out. It looks like Fisher's having trouble finding where he needs to go. Now he's going to make it up the ramp. He's going the, he's re going the wrong way. He's going backwards. He doesn't care. We'll yeah. probably have to keep him up on that motorcycle, Danny, and, and see if he can get his skid lid off and get a word with our winner. He was just up there because he is our points leader, and now he is in the main event. He won his heat race just like he needed to. Let's go trackside with Danny Medin. Danny? All right. Thanks, you guys. Davis Fisher, our current points leader. Great start to the weekend, or sorry, to the, for the day. What is it going to take to keep this momentum going and take the win here tonight? Uh, just get off get a good start and uh, keep moving forward and don't look back, and uh, hopefully we can put in some solid laps. Now, what's it like here to race at Ducoin for the first time? It's pretty cool track and practice is a little uh, loose, but uh, now they got it packed down and it seems to be working pretty good. Awesome, you're going on to the main. You guys make some noise for Davis Fisher. Scotty and Chris, back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Danny. Congratulations to Davis Fisher. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we switch our attention to the GNC1 class. Our fast qualifier is none other than the Piper. Number 42, Flying Brian Smith from Flint, Michigan. Number six, the Bullet Brad Baker of the Factory Harley will start second. Third on the front row is the Racing Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, the final year of her professional career, or full season, I should say, the 15 of Nicole Meese. Scheduled to start fourth is Kyle Johnson. I'm not sure if he's going to make it out or not. In the fifth starting spot is the number 10 of Johnny Lewis. And last rider on the front row is the 55 of Jake Shoemaker. Row number two, it'll be the 98 Kale Kochman, the 65 Corey Texter, 67 Colt Chabolt, 91 Mikey Martin, 72 Chaz Landers, and the last rider on row number two is the 50P of Kurt Marmer. Last rider, one rider back there on row number three, it is the 51Z from Lodi, California, that's Sean Raggio. Those are the riders scheduled for heat race number one, GNC1. Top two finishers go on to the Dash for Cash. Top four finishers directly transfer to tonight's 25-lap main event here at the Magic Mile. Chris, how important is the start? Uh, I think the start is is important but it's not key to winning uh, a bad start makes things uh, a little bit difficult uh, for the rest of the night but uh an okay start is sufficient here but i, I would say with the with the debris on the racetrack these guys are going to want to get to the front first debris as in loose loose dirt, loose dirt rocks uh, rocks that stuff hurts at 120 miles an hour they want to be the one spitting it out and not receiving it there we go ladies and gentlemen so there are five bikes on the front row. The rider that did not make it out, Kyle Johnson, went down in qualifying, and he's getting checked out at the local hospital. Bikes are in gear. Here we go. GNC1, the Harley-Davidson GNC1, presented by Vance and Hines. Heat race number one on the line. I just realized that with uh, with Kyle Johnson not lining up, we had five different brands 
on left on the front row. Look, Nicole Meese grabs the whole shot. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Nicole Meese. we got Johnny Lewis on the bottom. Brian Smith goes to the high side. The factory Harley's right there in the middle of the sandwich. Off a of turn of two, it's going to be Nicole Meese. Looks like Lewis pushes Smith up the racetrack. Watch out for that back straightaway wall. You can see the dust flying. It's Nicole Meese to lead. Lap one down the back straightaway. Johnny Lewis in second. The bullet, Brad Baker right there in third. And Brian Smith right in the middle of the sandwich. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Here comes the racing lady on the Black Hills. Harley Davidson, number 15. Nicole Meese leads him off in turn number four. What a feeling. Great run by Nicole Meese. As uh, we have one rider having a little problem. Uh, Harley Davidson out front, followed closely by Brad, Brad Baker. Side by side with the 42, Smith kind of searching for a little bit of grip. These guys uh, have a little bit different racetrack. Give them a few laps to kind of sort things out. With uh, Johnny Lewis running fourth on the Ducati and Jake Shoemaker in fifth on the Triumph. There goes Baker back up to the high side of the racetrack. Doesn't have anything for Nicole just yet. So it's Nicole right there on the edge of the groove. Baker's in the two spots. He's still trying the high side. Now he's going to get in behind Nicole. Now Johnny Lewis has a problem on the number 10 Ducati. Yeah, tough break for yeah. the uh, Ducati Lloyd brothers as Smith runs up the inside trying to take the shorter way around. Baker goes around the outside. Now here comes Meese back there in the two spot. I'm talking about Nicole. So it's the bull out front, Nicole Meese in second, third is the pipe for Brian Smith, and he gets sideways, almost touches the back straightaway wall. You can see the dust flying, so we got a couple of Harleys, first and second, Kawasaki in the third spot, and the Triumph back there in fourth. Well, Brian Smith, that lap going into one, ran it down on the bottom, kind of pinched him off. Brad Baker uh, up front, Nicole Meese in tow, pulls, pulls out the up. draft real wow. early. See if that uh, carries her by by start finish line, just inching by. 42, Brian Smith trying to search for traction as uh, Baker shows away around the high line, getting the thing turned, a la last week. Uh, gets the bike kind of straight up and down by the time he uh, he reaches the rubber coming off of turn two. We'll see if Jake Shoemaker on the Triumph can run down the leading uh, trio. Eight laps the distance in heat race number one. GNC riders, here comes Smith from third looking for the lead. He's trying to go up there. Almost made the same move as he did in Lima and tried to take over the lead. Now he goes up to the deep stuff. Here comes... Oh! oh! As Smith gets real sideways coming off of turn four. Nicole wow. Mees checks up, has nowhere to go, runs into the back of him, loses her momentum. My heart that was a, right That was there. a scary moment right there coming off of turn four but Nicole she gathered it up to see if she can uh, put her head down and uh, and regain a, a spot toward the front. We have Baker out front on the six, Smith on the 42 in second, Nicole Meese in third, Jake Schumacher in fourth. Those riders have checked out. A long ways back in fifth is Kel Kochman, sixth is Colt Schultz, Mikey Martin in seventh, Corey Texter in eighth and that's how the top eight are running on the racetrack. We are just past halfway ladies and gentlemen or just coming to halfway I should say. The last lap was halfway. Yeah, Smith starting to change up his lines a little bit, has enough uh, power using the draft, leads it at the line. Baker runs it around, back around the outside. Smith kind of follows him up. They're kind of on a similar pattern right now, running the same line around the racetrack. But the lap of four going into turn three, as Smith gets a good drive, pulls out pretty early, and goes on by without aid of much draft. Goes right on by the, the factory Harley-Davidson. These guys are... Nose wow. the tail through the corner, side by side, as Baker appears to have the advantage coming off the corners. Baker's got a much better coming off the corner, down, especially down there in three and four. He kind of sits a little bit side saddle on that motorcycle. He doesn't have nothing for him at the end of the straightaway. Cannot draft pass, but he goes around the outside. On the gas, the on the gas around the outside. That was, uh, I think those were those Kevin Atherton lessons going through turns one and two. He didn't breathe that one very much at all, if at all. And it goes right on back around the 42, headed into the... Into down the back straight away. Good battle for first and second. Also good battle for third and fourth. Nicole Meese and Shoemaker are settling the third and fourth by the crisscrossing down here in three and four. Baker's drifting up the racetrack. Watch out. Woo. Great battle. Slides it up in front. Uh, Brad knows here with the white flag coming out with a lap left that he's going to have to outride the 42 through the corners if he's going to have a shot. He leaves it on longer going into turn one. Baker goes back to the point. The Kawasaki back in second. Baker's got a little bit of a gap coming up for turn number two. They'll take him down the back straightaway for the final time in GNC one. Heat race number one. Here comes Smith using the draft into turn number three. What's going to happen? Here we go. Smith uh, drafts up the inside, kind of leaves it. Doesn't really force the issue up to the front. I think he wants to line himself up to set up a good draft down the front straightaway. This finish line is a long way down there 
and Brian Smith has proven time and time again that he has enough power to be able to pull it out. And that's a close wow. one at the line. It looks like, like Smith might have got him, but then we're going to have that's too close for me to call from here. Absolutely. So wait until the live timing and scoring catches up as the rest of the riders are coming across the finish line. As soon as we see the official results, we'll give it to you. Ladies and gentlemen, how'd you like that mile? The Bullet, Brad Baker taking the win, the Factory Harley by point zero one seven seconds. Brian Smith comes home in second, third spot will be Nicole Meese, a good solid run from her. She led some laps, got, has to feel good and build up some confidence. Jake Schumacher will get fourth. Those are your transfers. Fifth spot, Mikhail Kochman, 67, Colt Chabolts. Corey Texter will finish seventh, Mikey Martin eighth, Kurt Marmer ninth, Sean Raggio rounds out the top ten. Tough break for Johnny Lewis. He had a DNF finish in 11th. Chaz Landers and Kyle Johnson did not start. Your factory Harley takes the win. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for your heat race winner, the Bullet, Brad Baker. Pretty interesting to see him uh, make a, he, you know, in riders meeting, they told the riders they have one move coming off the corner going down the straightaway. And as he was about halfway there, he dips to the left, making Brian Smith have to kind of check up a little bit and chase that draft, allowing him to come up just short by a whisker. But here's Danny Medine. We throw down to her with our winner, Brad Baker. Now, if that's not a taste for what's to come, I don't know what is. You guys, give your, put your hands up for Brad Baker. That was awesome. Right to the line. Brad, you were untouchable at Lima. Is this a preview of what's going to happen the rest of today? Uh, I sure hope so, but uh, these guys are going to be tough. You know, Brian's a fierce competitor, especially on these miles. He's a great rider when it comes to these bigger tracks, and he has a really strong motorcycle underneath him. But uh, the Harley-Davidson uh, Factory XR 750 built by Vance and Hines and show of suspension, and along with my uh, crew chiefs, Craig Lager and Mike Hacker, back in the pit area doing a great job today. And we're doing, uh, we're doing good so far, but uh, it's going to be a dogfight, and I think you guys just got a perfect preview of what's happened in the main event, except there will probably be a couple others mixed in there with us after these next couple heat races. Congrats on the heat win. Make some noise, you guys. Scotty and Chris, back to you. Thanks a lot, Danny. That was Brad Baker. Here comes heat race number two, already coming to the line on the pole. Ladies and gentlemen, he can go outside or inside. Number one, it's the jammer, Jared Meese from Clio, Michigan. 17, Henry Wiles. 23, Jeffrey Carver. 44, Brandon Robinson. The two, Kenny Coolbeth Jr., the brand new dad again. Congratulations to Kenny. Had his first baby this week, a couple days ago, Liam Coolbeth. And then the last rider on the front row is the 96, Cody John Cox. Row number two, 73, Doug Lawrence. 23, Y, Ryan Foster. 27, Robbie Pierce. 16, Wyatt McGuire, 90 Ws, Wyatt Anderson, and last rider on row number two is Duke Erickson. Row number three is the 74 of Scooter Vernon. Those are the riders in. Heat race number two, just like the last one, ladies and gentlemen, top two will go to the Dash for Cash, and the top four riders all go directly to tonight's 25-lap Grand National Main Event here at the Magic Mile. You ready for this one, Chris? Yes, I am. Uh, defending champion Jared Mees. Uh, while having the point lead, you got to think a little bit frustrated by not having a win yet this season. I know in the end, it's about getting a getting that number, being able to retain that number one plate for another year. But he's looking to have a have a good good finish. As uh, we look in the back of the 74 of Scooter Vernon waving his arms frantically with an issue with his motorcycle. And we've seen this last week at Lima. Some of the non liquid cooled bikes we're doing that in the main event i think that's what scooter was doing he is done so he's pulling out of the way so a tough break for scooter vernon something goes wrong on the 74 tracks clear here we go heat race number two g and c one class is on the line and set to go the first yellow light is already on watch for the second yellow light and then the green and we are racing once again at the magic mile into coin and the clutches come out and they are off the two, Coolbeth up the inside with a great start and one around the outside, Jared Mees, as they get it up to get up to momentum. Many of these guys will wait till the back straightaway to kick them finally into high gear. But Mees uh, leading Coolbeth, one, two is one, two. There you go, one, Come. two down the back straightaway and the Zanotti teammate of 17 of Wilds back there in third. We got Carver battling up there also with, I believe, a 14. That's the 44, Brandon Robinson messed that up last week. Their leathers look very similar. The 14 and the 44 out the tournament. Four, they come. Here they come to the start finish lines. The two now up front. Zanotti racing one and two down the front straightaway. It's Coolbeth. And here comes Wiles in second, Meese in third, and Robinson, the tall drink of water back there in fourth. Mies bike, uh, at least on this first lap, late in the straightaway, appears to be a little anemic at the end of the straightaways. 
unless he's just kind of saving motor right now. He hasn't, he comes out of the draft, but we get toward the end and he doesn't really have a whole lot to pull on by there. I'm a little surprised by that. Well, do you think they need to make a gearing change or do you think he's just feeling it out right now? Chris? Yeah, he could be feeling it out. He could play, be playing possum right now, but right now he finds himself sandwiched between the two Zanotti racing teammates. Good run for Kenny Coolbeth. He's seen himself, uh, uh, seen the downward slide uh, the last few weeks in points. Had some difficulty with uh, wow. mechanical failures, but Mee's out front now. Uh, guys are kind of jockeying for position. Coolbeth slips a little wide off the two. Yeah, wow, just about got into the back tire of Coolbeth going into the corner. He had to check up and run a completely different line. You can see Kenny Coolbeth reaching up, grabbing the tire. Wiles goes to the lead on the 17th. So Wiles goes from third to first in the matter of the first and second turn into turn number three. It is Wiles, then Mee's, Coolbeth, and in fourth it's still Robinson. Fifth is Jeffrey Carver. John Cox still in the sixth spot. Dougie Fresh in seventh on the 73 bike. Uh, number one pulls out, goes on by 17 by start finish line. No surprise there. Kenny Coolbeth with a late move up the inside. Wow. Great shots here at the DeCoin Magic Miles Mies out front. Wiles in second, Coolbeth third. And right there behind him, waiting for anything to happen. The 44, Brandon Robinson, the top three. Now top four have pulling away. Cool, um, Coolbeth looking up the inside. Coolbeth goes by his. Zanotti teammate Mies goes to the high side. Here they come. Handlebar to handlebar. Now Wiles goes to the high side. He's trying to go around Coolbeth. So Coolbeth struggling right in the middle of the corner a little bit. Wiles comes around each time. Well, when you draft up the inside here at the DuCoin Mile, it's difficult to kind of get your momentum turned as we go across to the halfway flags. Wiles moves to the front. Gets the thing turned kind of late. We'll see if he be able to get the thing turned. Uh, kind of slips up a little bit. Can't quite pivot that thing through the apex, but still maintains the advantage over Kenny Kubeth down his back straightaway. Kubeth drafting by, and uh, the 44 on the Triumph sitting patiently back and forth. Wants to be a player here as we're uh, three laps to go. They're really drifting up the racetrack down here in three and four. It is cool that's out front. Wiles in second. Meese, the odd rider out. He's looking to get in the dash for cash. He needs to pick up one more spot. Robinson now has caught the top three. Something happened out in turn number four. We'll have to see if we can figure out what that was. Uh, we have a motorcycle red flag, there. Red flag, I hear. The 90W well, in the back. Black flag came out, so I'm hearing red. I'm hearing black, so that red flag is out. Red, red flag, flag is, out, is out. So one of the bikes let go. I believe that was the 90W of White Anderson. So the reason for the red flag, ladies and gentlemen, I heard the motor let go coming off the turn four. They want to make sure there's no oil or chicken bones on the racetrack, as Kenny Tolbert said earlier. Yeah, I've got to, got to clean up the debris. Uh, it's always good when you see one go up and smoke like that. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's best to to get them off and get a good look at it. There's So there is uh, what's uh, left of the 90W, Wyatt Anderson. Uh, the engine lets go. He gets out of harm's way, which that is what you're told to do. And he's from Colbert, Washington on a Suzuki SV650. And a tough break, not the way he wanted to end his day, because that's going to be expensive. Yes, it is, uh, especially if they find a little bits and pieces of metal out Chicken. there on the racetrack. Chicken bones. Yep. Not going to be a good one for him. So tough, tough break. Long so way to go to blow a motor. Yep. So uh, it's good to see him making the trip all the way here from Colbert, Washington. So the rest of the bikes all go to the uh, hot box area at this time. You're not allowed to work on these motorcycles, but uh, you see some of the teams are taking a look, talking things over and try to figure things out. You are allowed to put on some tariffs. I know I talk about this each and every week, but we we still could have some new fans here tuning in on fanschoice.tv or joining us here at the DuCoin Magic Mile. They go to the hot box, Chris, and they're not allowed to work on the bikes unless you're involved in the accident. No accident here, but this pre preventative, making sure there's no oil on that racetrack. Now the Carver machine starts getting hot. The 23 is overheating. It's starting to smoke over there on the, on the as they wait off. You know, they've been out there running them pretty hard, hot pace here for the last... You know, five laps or so, and then uh, when you bring them to a halt, they no longer have that 100 to 120 mile an hour air work uh, running through them. So these water cooled motorcycles uh, need to have a fan on them to help assist cooling them off. And if they don't have that going at the moment, these things can can overheat just sitting there. All right, so Kenny Coolbeth was shown in the lead the last time across the start finish line. Henry Wallace in second, Jared Meese is in third, Brandon Robinson fourth, Jeffrey Carver was shown in the fifth spot. Are you concerned that he was overheating right there? Could is, or you think he'll be all right after it cools down for a while? Hard to say. Uh, they know better than we do. We're we're merely speculating from this uh, from this vantage point. But uh, as they get the riders starting to move their way back up toward the toward the start line, uh, they'll have to figure it out. Uh, 
Saw a little bit of body language there from uh, from Jared Mees on the number one. Not quite sure. I, I, some about not going forward or what have you. Uh, so, be interesting to see if uh, he can make it through this heat race. Chris, you kind of said it was kind of flat. So uh, at the end of the straightaways, at least early on, it was. Or you had anemic was your was your adjective. What what do you mean? What well, what could be happening at the end of the straightaway? Well, it, it just appeared uh, knowing the bikes that Kenny Talbert builds and the, knowing the way that Jared Meese has been running, we haven't seen those things uh, uh, give up. You know, those things usually go on by and keep on going at the end of the straightaway. And it looked like he was hitting kind of a wall of air. And uh, so it, it's interesting to 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 see if uh, it, that's a an issue that can be addressed or something they may have to wait till after the heat race because there's really nothing they can do about it at the moment. They are sending out the uh, pickup with the trailer to go pick up the bike the rear wheel is locked up they said that they don't think it's the motor but they think the brakes are completely locked up so that's why they're sending him out to check it out uh don't forget uh ladies and gentlemen that coming up next weekend is the ama pro flat track racing is back in indy at the indy mile at the indiana state fairgrounds in indianapolis on a new date saturday july the 11th next weekend infield viewing beer sales and motorcycle parking behind the grandstands all return because we're not part of the state fair anymore save with advanced discount tickets on online at indymile.com Speaking of upcoming races, also the 94th running of the Springfield Mile National will be Sunday, September the 6th, Labor Day weekend. Order in advance and save $10 per ticket. If you want tickets, call 217-632-0277 to get your advance tickets for the Springfield Mile, which is coming up later on Memorial Day and Labor Day every year. We are at the Springfield Mile, the fastest mile in North America, they say. I don't, you never know. Everybody wants to say they have the fastest track, but it is a super fast mile. If you haven't been there, check it out. So they're lining them up down there. As soon as that track's clear, they're checking out. Make sure there's no uh, oil on the racetrack. And they also got to load up the 90W of Wyatt Anderson. And when we get that track cleared off, we'll turn them loose. Also, don't forget... Don't forget the Class 79. Your friends are down there selling 50-50 tickets. The Class of 79... Uh, like we've talked about last week, one of the fastest group of riders that went expert in one year, Ronnie Jones, Wayne Rennie, Scott Parker, among others. Uh, Charlie Roberts is here. Tommy Doom is here. Uh, they have a few others that are, are members of that group. But they uh, they sell raffle tickets. They sell banners. They've got T-shirts out front. Uh, help raise money for people to get hurt in our sport of flat track. So be sure to get your 50-50 tickets. Last time I heard, it was over $900. And I believe Danny Medina is caught up to uh, our race leader, Kenny Coolbeth. Danny? All right. Thanks, you guys. You had a great run out there, Kenny Coolbeth. Going. What is going through your mind right now? I uh, just get out front, and try to try to get away. The track's uh, actually pretty good right now. It's uh, pretty racy, and uh, it's uh, to my liking. So uh, hopefully we get this uh, Zanotti Harley Davidson up front, and uh, you know do some business tonight. Now, what's the coolest part about racing here at the Decoy Mile? Uh, we haven't been here in 10 years, I think, and uh, I think I'm the one of the fewest that's ever ridden here. So it's it's pretty cool. It's a uh, it's cool venue to come back to for sure. All right, good luck. That was the voice of the brand new dad, Kenny Coolbeth. Had a baby just a couple days ago, Liam Coolbeth, and he is a brand new father. So he's out here leading the heat race. It has to feel good because he actually had to take a provisional last week and uh, and struggled at Lima, looking much better here today at the Magic Mile. Well, I'm sure there's a. Uh uh, a, a sense of relief you know I know uh, talking to him last week you know he kept waiting for the text message that that uh, Jen his wife was going into labor and it never came I'm sure that weighed on him a little bit and uh, knowing that now he uh, he's fine is a good deal well, uh, we see uh, see some work going on with the number one and I'm hearing that they are working on the motorcycle they know the repercussions he's going to start the back well, that's what you have to do. Uh, obviously, they have some sort of issue that needs to be addressed. Well, let's tell everybody who we're talking about that's not there. That we're talking about, uh, we're talking about Jared Meese on the number one. They're working on that motorcycle right now, so he'll go to the tail end of the field. I believe uh, Danny Medine is actually caught up to our second place runner on the also Zanotti Racing. Let's go track side with Danny. All right, thanks, you guys. Henry Wiles, what's it going to take to chase down the number two of Kenny Coolbeth Jr.? Well, we had a good little race going back and forth and uh, just drafting around with each other and. It's really just going to come down to the last lap, see who's uh, got the position on who. Uh, a lot of fun drafting around with Kenny and Jared. You know, they're experienced model racers, and, you know, you can trust them out there. So uh, it's it's fun battling with my Zanotti teammate. Now, I know that you're going to at the TT tracks. I have not been able to go to one yet or even this season because we haven't had one. What do you like about racing here? 
Oh, the coin mile is awesome. It's it's such a fun rider or fun rider track, really. I hope the funds are having as much fun as we were in that heat race because, uh, you know, right now we've got a full line in the corners to ride in. So you know, we can ride top to bottom in the corners, and we actually are riding bottom to top into the corner going into turn three there. And uh, you know, it's uh, it's just a fun race track. I'm glad we're here. I hope we can keep coming back. Uh, you know, we've got the other classic miles like Springfield and Sacramento, but uh, they're not DeCoin. I think he said it best. Scotty and Chris, I really think you probably want to be out here, but I have the best seat in the house. Well, you are getting the, probably the best seat in the house because she can hear everything. She can feel everything as they go blasting by. So that was uh, that was the other Zanotti rider. That was Henry Wiles currently sitting second. And the story of this one, ladies and gentlemen, is they are working frantically on the number one bike. That is the defending champion, Jared Meese. He knows his repercussions. He's going to start the tail end of the field right now. We'll see if Danny can catch up with him. Kenny Tolbert, Sammy Sweet down there working on it. Uh, you can see the rest of the team. You can see Nicole Meese is there. We're still working on the oil uh, that is possibly down there in turn number four here at the Magic Mile. Make sure it is clear. You can see that long black streak as they walked across the track where that rear wheel locked up. But they're going track side. I believe Danny Medine's going to see if she can get in there. I don't know if she'll be able to get a word with these riders or not. Let's go track side and catch up with Danny and Jared Meese. Jared, can you kind of fill us in right now on what happened and what's going on? Uh, just halfway down the straightaway, the thing was kind of like surging a little bit and was like laboring on some power. Uh, this thing's a rocket ship and uh, was having a little trouble drafting those guys and it shouldn't be that way so uh, hopefully we got it fixed and um, we have to come from the back but uh, it was better to be safe and sorry all right scotty and chris back to you guys so he, he really didn't allude to what's going on but he noticed the same thing you noticed chris carr the bike just didn't didn't have it at the end of the straightaways it was not full power and he wasn't able to pass anybody at the front straight at the end of the straightaways so smart move he gets his tuner over there it's one mini nationals most of them with you sammy sweets there and they're doing some work what could they possibly be doing right now he thinks it's surging like it's electrical well you know it could be uh something with the ignition system a wire loose or shorting it could easily be as something as simple as uh dirt in a carburetor you know this this track especially with that bike he's got a, a, a forward facing carburetor that's fully exposed on the left side of the motorcycle he's running this reverse cylinder engine uh it could very easily be that thing sucking a little bit of dirt so uh no telling maybe they'll maybe they'll tell us later on today what it what it really is uh maybe not but uh, either way they got a problem they better fix it i got a text message that just came in from bubba showbert he said you remember what scotty he said you know what he said, I still have that track record, that track. I asked him what the times was. He says, I can't remember, but uh, he said he knows he has the track record. So I uh, wish you were here, Bubba. We'll definitely see you at Springfield Miles. Uh, that's one of our favorite tracks we go to. We stay at, stay at Looper Rails, the uh, Class 79, where they go to Boone Saloon after their golf outing on Friday that is coming up there September the 4th. So if you want to be part of that, follow Class 79 and friends on Facebook. Also, I just got another message that the, the – uh, Eight to injured riders are also selling their new trading cards. We've got, I've got two sets of them, but uh, they're selling those online via their Facebook page, Eight to Injured Riders, and you can pick them up at Indy with Wyatt McGuire or Chad Coast in the pit area. I've got a couple sets. I'm getting one set completely autographed. The other set, I'm leaving it completely sealed up, and I'm going to have a piece of history, just like the souvenir T-shirts are out front with you on the front. I'm going to have to get one of those and get it signed. I hope they don't sell out. I'd like to get my hands on a, on one or two of those as, as well. But going back to Bubba Schobert, you know, I've, I've raced with Bubba here back in the 80s, and and, and he's correct. You know, uh, a different prepared racetrack. Um, you know, these guys are, are producing probably more horsepower in the history of GNC1 racing, but it's not necessarily relating to fastest lap times around the racetrack. Fast times in that heat race there, 36.6 by uh, our top four riders all running together. Uh, I recall day races here running in the 34s. So, uh, you know, uh, it's not uncommon. Just because the bikes get faster doesn't mean the lap times get faster. Well, and the, the track changes. The track conditions are a lot different now than they used to be. It's been a long time since we had bikes on the racetrack, you know, and, and we got a lot of rubber that's that was here before that's not here anymore and there's new rubber being put down so i'm assuming the tracks are gonna get faster as the sun has gone down you call it the big the big the big orange ball big orange ball in yeah the sky it's gone so the sun is going down still a beautiful night here in decoin sun is setting we're getting set to uh wrap up heat race number two for the gnc ones up next will be heat race number three for the gnc ones after that we'll have our first schedule intermission we may or may not have that, depending on what's going on here. We'll have to see how the track's holding up. It's scheduled so we can give you guys a, a, 
a, a, a chance to run to the bathroom, concession stand, or the T-shirt booth, or also uh, just visit with your friends. And then we'll come back after our first intermission, GNC2 last chance qualifier, GNC1 dash for cash, two GNC1 semis, our second intermission, and then our two main events. GNC2s will go first. Uh, a little bit different than last week. Last week we were fighting the battles with the rain, and today there's no rain. We just got some beautiful skies. And as soon as that track's ready, we're going to fire up the bikes, and I'm thinking it's just about done because Steve Moorhead has climbed on top of his Kimco scooter, and he's getting out of the way. So he's <laughs> he's headed out of the way. So Bubba Schobert sending his pictures of what he's doing, how he's watching the uh, FansChoice.tv sitting on a chair that's Looks like a big old rocking chair. Meant for a king. Yeah. Well, Bubba is king. He was certainly one of the guys to beat. I I came up short uh, drafting him to the line here in, I think, 1986 or 7. I was was one hot little teenager at the time. I was wanting to win the Ducoin Mile, and I came up about a half a wheel short. So uh, Bubba certainly knew his way around the Ducoin Mile. It's great to hear he's watching the coverage at home. And... uh, we uh, look forward to hopefully seeing him up in uh, up in Springfield in uh, a couple months. Uh, so, hey, fans, head to FamilyEvents.com and click on the Contact Us button and tell them if you would participate in a bike show right here at the DuCoin, DuCoin Mile next year. So that's a good sign that DuCoin is going to be back on the schedule next year. Also, sign up for the mailing list while you're there. Again, FamilyEvents.com. If you'd like to participate in a bike show possibly right here next year at the DuCoin Mile, check it out, FamilyEvents.com. So good news is motorcycles are rolling We'll have to keep our eyes on the number one machine, see if he can come from dead last and work his way up to the four spot or better. So right now, Coolbeth pulls up the number two. He's our leader. Wiles, his teammate, is currently in the number two spot, starting second. Now we got Brandon Robinson. We'll move himself up to the third position. Well, I, I tell you, you know, it's it's fortunate, you know, with with uh, this staggered restart. Jared Mees, although he'll be at the tail of the field, is not that far behind. We don't right. have a full heat race. It's not like he's lining up 18th. He's going to be lining up about 13th. So an advantage, he's a little bit closer to the front. He does have four laps. If they've got that thing running the way it, the way it should run, I don't think it'll be a problem for him to maybe have a chance to even win this at the end. So they did leave an empty spot. I'm sure they were doing that for Mies, but uh, maybe they just might be leaving that. So they might be just leaving it. Now they're going to scoot everybody over. So they are going to scoot everybody over and fill that position. I thought they were going to leave that empty, but uh, everybody will slide over one spot. And we'll get ready to restart this one. It's going to be a good one. We know for sure we got the Zanotti racing uh, Harley-Davidson's first and second, the two of Coolbeth and the 17 of Wiles. They're trying to work their way to the front. Jeffrey Carver now takes the fourth spot, which is our last transfer. He was our hard charger from last week. Um, so we'll see if he can stay up there in the top four spots. Well, in reality, Mies is basically on a, about what would be called row four. He's just like being on the penalty line. Right. And with such a short run to turn one, he should be able to move up around the outside, accelerate as uh, some of the riders kind of move right on him. But uh, Jared getting a decent run up to about the fifth spot into fourth. Uh, should be fourth coming off a of turn two on the first lap. No problem. Here they come off the turn number two down the back fairway. It's cool, Beth. Down the back side, we have Wiles in second. Carver's up to third. And look who's in fourth. It's the jammer, Jared Meese. Jammer, Jared Meese goes around the outside of Carver, sends it off in, up around the outside of the 17 of Henry Wiles, fighting for position. Just like uh, nothing happened. Just like nothing happened. Let's see if uh, they got that thing run the way it should run. We'll be able to find out if that thing goes blowing on by at the end of the straightaway. And there it goes. Here comes Meese from dead last, ladies and gentlemen. He is credited with leading that lap on number one, Harley Davidson. So he made the right move. He said he could tell, just like you could tell, that that bike was not running as fast as it should be at the end of the straightaways. Meese out front on the one. Two is Coolbeth in second. Wiles in the third spot. Carver now in fourth. Now here comes Dougie Fresh on the 73. He's got a Kawasaki that's a prototype, kind of of the same thing Brian Smith rides. He's only going to ride it on the mile. So Dougie Fresh trying to get in the mix on the 73 Kawasaki. The number one out front, Jared Mees, looks like uh, business as usual, uh, although not the usual as before. Great draft now. I think that problem has returned. It sure did, because Coolback looked like he had a lot more motor at the end, like the, the number one looked like it got flat going into the corners, that just like you mentioned earlier. It got gobbled up, but it ran good for one lap, and then it uh, kind of has fallen on its nose. It runs good, but it runs out of steam at the end of the straightaway. Well, this time it looks like it hangs on a little bit longer, but not. But it still makes the pass. So this, they'll be coming to the white flag, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, two of these riders go to the dash. 
four riders to the main. We've got a three riders breaking away. We've got a good battle for fourth on back. Here they come off a of four. White flag is going to be in the air. It is Meese out front. Mies doing a good job. Uh, 17 almost wow. up there in the second. Do you think there's any team orders between the 17 and the 2 at this point? No. I think their team orders is go. beat your teammate. There you go. <laughs> you know, there really no orders at all. As Jared Mies leads him off at turn 2. Robinson right there in the third spot. They'll take him down the back straight away. It's cool best. Here comes Wiles up the inside. Mies back there. The Mies, it didn't look like he had anything going into turn number 3. So it's going to be between the Zanotti teammates. Here they come off of four. The groove's getting higher and higher. Cool Beth up the inside. He'll lead them off of four. It's Cool Beth and Wiles, one and two. Down the back straight they go. Cool Beth hanging on to it. Here comes Wiles. Neck wow. and neck. And wow. the number one got up in there at the last second, but something happened to that motorcycle. Like you said, the Gremlins came back there at the end. Well, you see how fast Mies is trying to get. He, he knows he's upset right now. So something happened to that motorcycle. He'll take it back to the hot box or take it back to the pit area. Will he have a chance to switch bikes, or is that the bike he's going to have to ride? No, the, by rules, uh, they are allowed to, to show up with any motorcycle for the final without penalty. If they can't address the problem that the, or find the problem and fix it, uh, they do have the opportunities. We uh, Here's a look at the replay. Coming to the line, looks like Wiles trying to make the move and take take the win away from the brand-new dad. It's going to be hammering Hank Wiles by point zero zero two seconds. So Wiles takes the win. Cool Beth on the uh, number two bike will get second. Jared Meese will take the third spot. Brandon Robinson will take fourth. Jeffrey Carver, Doug Lawrence, Cody Johncox, Foster on back will go to a semi. And uh, I've got some text messages. The, the helicopter landed here. And that is a safety precaution that the AMA Pro Racing has done just in case anything happens because there is not a, a good trauma unit close by. So if anything happens to any of our riders, that's why the helicopter landed earlier. Nobody is needing a ride right now, so that we want to make that clear. Let's go trackside with our heat race winner, Danny Medines, caught up with Henry Wiles. Thanks, you guys. He just gave me some crap down here for saying that he's only good at TTs, but I didn't say that. Henry, was that a battle between a teammate? Were you guys working together? What was going on with you and Kenny Coolbeth out there? Uh, no, we weren't working together. We were definitely battling for, for position going into turn three. And, uh, you know, I actually messed up a little bit, but that's just a testament to how good the Zanotti Harley's running. Uh, Jared, he kind of came by me and sucked me on for the win. So uh, it all worked out just good. I know it was just inches, but that's all you need. Hey, you're going on to the dash for cash, and you're going on to the main event. Congratulations. You guys, make some noise for Henry. Scotty and Chris, back to you guys. Thanks a lot, Danny. So Henry Wiles takes the heat race win, and his teammate comes home in second. And listen, he won by point zero zero two seconds, so two one thousandths of a second. And uh, third place, Jared Mees, uh, 0 0.024, finishes third, and that was closer than the finish in heat race number one. Absolutely. So here we go. It's our second. third and final heat race for the GNC1 class. 32, Sean Bear. 7, Sammy Halbert. 59, Willie McCoy. 14, Briar Bauman. 17, F. Jared Vandekoy. 80, Stevie Bonzi. That is row one. Row number two is the 87, Mick Kirkness. We have the 94K, Jake Cunningham. 69G, the two-time Daytona 200 winner. That's Danny Eslick. 52 is Shayna Texter. 28P is Michael Bickerton. And rounding out row number two is the 46 of Skinny Lenny, Aaron Linfords from Salina, Kansas. This is our last qualifying heat race of the evening, ladies and gentlemen. So, so far we've had some great racing, and we expect more of it. Keep your eyes on the 32 that's Sean Bear uh, Chris told us earlier he turns wrenches on that bike his family has a machine shop they have put that frame together and he is making it work here today I wonder if the track's going to be to his liking in this heat race it's a KTM 990 Super Duke he is from Mechanicsburg Pennsylvania and he's on the outside of row number one Bonzi started at the tail end of the field on row number three. I'm wondering if he switched motorcycles, too. I imagine he's riding a motorcycle that he didn't check in earlier, having some issues early on. Uh, he's certainly not in his qualifying position on the front row. To be on the third row, it means he's on something that didn't run through tech with his number on it. So we got five on the front row, five on row number two, and Bonzi was all by himself on row number three. And they're going to turn number one. Bauman's on the inside. Sammy Halbert in the middle. And Sean Bear goes to the high side on the number 32 KTM. Sean gets a little bit twitchy right there. Here they come off of turn number two. It is Sean Bear. Here comes Wild Willie McCoy. He's looking for some more. It's going to be Bear. Oh, Willie up Willie, against yeah. the wall. Hang on down the back straightaway. What a scary moment right there. Yeah, riding up a little bit of a berm there coming off of turn two with a 46-year-old veteran uh, keeping his cool. Gets the wheels back in line. 
Puts himself in position. Let's see if he can do anything with our leaders. Sean Bear goes back to the line. He was running in qualifying. Goes in high, comes off down low. So it's Sean Bear, Sammy Helver, Willie McCoy. Now Van de Koy puts the 17F into the four spot. Yeah, as it goes side by side, uh, up around the outside, the seven is Sammy Halbert. Uh, around the outside, uh, through one and two of the 32, Halbert can't quite get the thing turned and get around. But uh, 32, Sean Bear, showing the strength from, uh, from practice and qualifying is no fluke. Leads him off into turn three. Hasn't been anybody past him yet. You know what? He ran really good at the Sacramento mile. Completely different track. Now, Willie McCoy shows a wheel on the inside of Sammy Halbert. Doesn't quite make the pass. It's Sean Bear, the 32. Sammy Halbert in second. Willie McCoy, third. Van McCoy in fourth. Bauman, fifth. And Bonzi from the fourth row, the third row, is up to the sixth spot. Good run for Bonzi, but up front as uh, 32 drifts a little wide, and Sammy Halbert sees a little gap, shoots the gap up the inside. Willie McCoy trying to get hooked up off from around the bottom. We got a three-rider freight train as Willie berm shots up against the outside wall on the backstretch again. Completely different racing than any of the other miles we've been to so far this year. They're using a little bit of the cushion up there at the high side. Sean Bear on the 32 regains the lead. Sammy Halbert's in second. McCoy is right there on the 59. He'll try to tuck in line and get towed down the front straightaway behind that KTM. He is handlebar and handlebar Sammy. Sammy's kind of pitching him off a little bit. Yeah, the 90 degree V of this KTM out front, or I should say 75 degree, it needs to have the thing pointed so the line that Sean is running here is real good for him it allows him to get the bike straight up and down and get it to accelerate and get a good bite off Ooh. the corner as he he himself gets hooked up and out pitching out into the back stretch fence so it's Sean Bear he's got a little bit of breathing now the battle is for second that is for who's going to make the dash for cash and who's not wow Sean Bear's up against the air fence down there in three and four and throwing up a cloud of dust which he could be doing that on purpose to make it for it's hard to see for the riders behind you. It's Sean Bear. Halfway flags are out. Willie McCoy goes up the inside, takes the second spot away on the Harley Davidson of Wausau entry. Now Sammy Howard comes back around the outside on the BriggsAuto.com Kawasaki. Well, we've seen uh, the few laps that Halbert has been close enough to try and pull a draft pass on the 32 KTM mounted Sean Bear. Hasn't been able to pull out and go on by. McCoy making passes up the inside, but it pinches himself off. He's not able to go. Oh, this time he's able to carry enough momentum to put himself up in front of the seven. But see if uh, Willie McCoy now gets a good drive off four. See if he can get sucked up into the draft of the 32 out front. Maybe this is what these guys in second and third need is a different chaser at the moment. There you go. So Sean Bear runs a little bit lower last time by. Now here comes Willie McCoy in the middle of the racetrack, and he's going up the inside. Sean Bear has to go to the high side. He's trying to drop down to the front in front of Willie McCoy. Doesn't quite make it to shut the door completely, but Willie McCoy's right there. He's going to try to use the draft into three. They go. Willie and pulls out early. Here they come. Pulls out early, comes up the inside, but we know that 32 is going to run it up high and run it up hard. Willie McCoy gets out in front. Now let, here's the interesting part. Can he get a good enough drive? He Create sure, enough separation? And sure can the did. 32 run him down by the start-finish line? Willie went in there, kind of took the line away from the 32 of Bear. Now Bear goes to the inside, but he has to go in there and go high because that's the line he's been using. Now he's going to higher than he has before down there in one and two. He'll go up there, use the cushion, square it off, and try to cut back in front of Willie McCoy, and does. Willie has to change his line and change his setup, coming off a two. Down the back straight where they go. Here comes Willie once again. Willie McCoy up the inside is uh, the number seven of Halbert is really faded out of the picture here. No wrong, no longer a threat seven for the lead. Seven is slowing down on the back straightaway. Report, report on the radio. Good job, Chris. But Willie McCoy up the inside sets up a full-on drag race here. Neither rider really set up for in a position in a drag race. It looks like the 32 coming across for the white flag has a slight acceleration advantage. This last lap should be interesting, but. Both of them are going to the dash. If they, they can keep it on two wheels. How mm -hmm. important is it to win or get second right now? Well, I think it's important to learn information and maybe figure out how, how you, you might have to beat this rider in the main event. So these guys are going to be storing that information behind or in the back of their mind. It doesn't really matter. They're kind of by themselves, but for all they know, the seven's waiting to pounce on right. both of them. Right. They have no idea that uh, Sammy Howard had a mechanical. Will McCoy's going to lead him off the floor. We'll see if he can hang on to the win. Sean Fair's going to use the KTM muscle to take him down the front straight away. Checkered coming off a little out. short, Willie McCoy, a little evasive maneuver, coming off a of turn four, makes his one move down toward the inside. Sean Bear didn't see that coming. Uh, came down a little late to pull into the pull in behind and get a late draft. Comes up short. Chris, great racing in all the races right there. Willie McCoy takes the win on the 59. Sean Bear will take second on the 32. Jared Vandekoy will get the third spot, and Briar Bauman will be our fourth and final transfer. Here's the drag race finish to the. 
drag, drag race to the finish line. Willem McCoy again takes it by about a bike length. This time the win is by .029. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for number 59, Wild Willie McCoy taking the win on the Harley Davidson of Wausau entry. Again, Sean Bear second. That's your top two going to the dash. Bandicoy third, Briar Bauman fourth. Stevie Bonzi came from the back row up to fifth. Tough break for Sammy Helbert. He has scored with 11th place. So a tough break. We are going to take a five-minute break, maybe about a six-minute break after this one. Our first scheduled intermission is after this interview, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to go grab yourself a souvenir T-shirt, you can do so right now. But before we do that, we're going to get an interview with our heat race winner. This is a two-time Springfield Mile winner, one of the oldest riders on the circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, make, here comes Danny Medine and Wild Willie McCoy. All right. Thanks, you guys. Flat track isn't just about the young guns, is it? Take us through that race, Willie, against Sean Bayer. Oh, what a good race. And how about that one for the old guys? <laughs> this Harley Davis of Wausau. <laughs> yeah. This Harley Davis of Wausau is running really good. I can't thank Kenny Talbot enough. He's really helped me get this bike running good. My buddy Chad McCracken's working his butt off. Kenny Hall, um, Bob, everybody that's here to help me. Doug and Merle, you guys are the best. I love you. You're the best sponsors and family in the whole wide world. We'll get this baby ready to go for the trophy dash and be ready for the main. That's pretty exciting because you haven't been in a dash for cash yet this season. Nope, I've been lazy. <laughs> Whatever. You guys, make some noise for Willie McCoy. Great run there by Willie McCoy. He's a, a part-time competitor here on the, the Harley-Davidson uh, GNC1 circuit. Uh, he saves all his uh, two-wheel fun for the mile tracks, and I'm sure he was looking forward to coming here uh, as soon as they put this one on the schedule. We should see him next week at Indianapolis as well. But he's widely considered a mile specialist at the age of 46. Shows his medal. Well, that is it for the first portion of the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's time to take a short break. Good time to stretch your legs. Go grab yourself something to eat, something to drink. Pick up a Vince souvenir T-shirt. We'll open up the pit area in just a little bit. So uh, here comes the T-shirts. we got some free T-shirts coming up. The T-shirt cannon is coming out. We're going to take a time right now to thank some of our sponsors, and thanks for coming out. We'll be back shortly with our GNC2 Last Chance Qualifier, followed by our Dash for Cash. <laughs> 